Well, good evening, good evening. You're getting the big shot today. Yeah, the big studio shot. <laughs> I don't use this very often, do I? In fact, I don't think I've ever used it at all. I was just playing around in my settings earlier and I thought I'll give you the full studio shot. Yes, um, but we'll switch very shortly. So yes, it is Tuesday the 13th of May. Just check my screen. Yes, it is still the 13th of May, <laughs> 2014. You're watching Vapor Scene here on VaporTrails.tv. Uh, and uh, I've got some, uh, I've got some VT coming up for you from the one show from last week. Uh, and also from the States, a couple of different states in the States. Um, they seem to be all over the e-cig story like a rash. It's a shame that we're not um, doing it as well, isn't it, over here? But anyway, there you are. So all that is going to be after you see the things that we like to call the titles. It's Vapor Scene. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e liquid And we're back on the close-up shot now. <laughs> no, I don't have a big house. I just have green screen technology. And maybe next week I'll set up a shot and you can see what you don't see. Yeah, um, before I click the button that says replace the green with the studio. Yeah, I might set that shot up for you next week. Yes, good evening and welcome to this week's Vapor Scene. It is Tuesday the 13th of May 2014. Uh, and uh, as I said uh, in the beginning there, before the titles and pre-show, I've got some VT from all over the world. Well, the UK and the States, anyway. Um, information and misinformation coming across from the States. Um, and the similar from last Wednesday's one show, yeah. But uh, I'm going to start off this week with some uh, news that I found on the Totally Wicked website, strangely enough. Yeah, here we go. Um, yes, the TSA, the Transport Security Administration, approves e-cig travel. Um, the Transportation Security Administration has confirmed that they have no plans to restrict the transportation of electronic cigarettes on board commercial airplanes. Vapors will continue to be allowed to pack their e-cigs in either carry-on or checked baggage. Um, although I wouldn't advise putting your batteries in your checked baggage. They need to go into your, uh, your carry-on baggage. Um, some airlines have instilled their own regulations prohibiting the use of electronic cigarettes whilst aboard the plane. It is recommended that all vapours check with staff prior to boarding the airplane. Passengers may be required to store e-liquids in checked cases along with, alongside other liquids which are banned from the carry-on luggage of many airlines. Um, yes, so they are saying that um, the TSA is saying they haven't got any plans to do any bans. However, if you see down the bottom there, in February, an electronic cigarette was discovered and removed from a flight because it was designed to look like a grenade. I wonder if it was one of those. Yes, quite possibly. And we did talk about those here on Vape Trails TV uh, on Dave's show. Uh, and uh, he did mention about um, he wouldn't take it on a plane for that very reason. Um, but yet somebody did. <laughs> uh, yes, I wouldn't take anything that resembled a firearm or an explosive or... Uh, a grenade or anything like that on a plane, uh, even in checked luggage, because it can hold up the whole plane uh, if they get a security alert. I remember seeing one of those kind of fly in the wall documentaries about Australia's customs, uh, and they uh, they cleared out the whole um, airport because somebody had a belt that looked like a grenade on the buckle. Yeah, so uh, probably not a good idea, but there you go. Um, Second bit I've got is on the little story we did with Vince from Australia. Um, Vince is currently still campaigning uh, and he says in his blog, uh, today I went to court for sentencing. However, my lawyer managed to get an adjournment until the 24th of June. 
the adjournment is to allow for the prosecution and defence to make submissions that relate to sentencing, how high a fine I should pay. This adjournment is very good news in my mind, as it now means that the time I have before going to lodge an appeal has been extended from the 30th of May to the 15th of July. Every bit of time is really important as it gives more time to run a public awareness campaign and hopefully more time to generate the money required to fund an appeal. And I would like to thank everyone for your support in this fight. This is a fight for and of the people. Together we stand and together we will be heard. And you see there that the, uh, the fund's up to 21,155 Australian. Yeah. Um, so, well done, Vince. And I shall be keeping a close eye on that story over the coming weeks and months. Uh, and uh, we'll probably get Vince back on again, hopefully in video next time, uh, to uh, give us an update on what's gone on. Um, and to my next bit, yes. Um, I was watching The One Show last week as I do, because I, I quite like The One Show. Uh, it's not a bad bit of entertainment. Uh, and uh, there was a story on there about exploding e-cigs and such like. Yeah. Now, it's kind of not bad, but in my opinion, it leans too heavily on, uh, on the e-cig side. If you haven't seen it, have a look and uh, tell me what you think. your life constantly on charge? Do you have an array of phones, tablets, laptops, cameras, shavers and toothbrushes all plugged into the wall, displaying more little blinking lights than the bridge of the Starship Enterprise? Well, if so, you are not alone. But before you spend money on any replacement charges for those devices, just heed Dan Donnelly's advice. Yes, or you could end up with uh, more bang for your buck. This is the moment an e-cigarette left charging behind a pub bar explodes in a ball of flames. It may be rare, but it's far from the only such incident to have happened in the last few months. So exactly what is going on? We've discovered that in many cases it wasn't just the e-cigarette that was to blame, but one of these, a fake charger that's unsafe to use. Millions of charges for electronic devices are bought every year online and in markets and shops. But hundreds of thousands of them are cheap imitations that contain hidden dangers. I've come to the Burn Hall at the Building Research Establishment near Watford to find out just what those dangers are. A team of fire investigators are rigging up an e-cigarette to replicate what could happen when a dodgy charger is used. In less than 30 minutes, the risks become clear. Oh, I've got more smoke coming out now from the end, yeah. Oh, aye. Right. Yeah, yeah, and flame as well. Yeah, a little bit of flame coming out the end there. So how's the charger managed to do that? So, so what we've done there is we've actually replicated one without the normal protection that you would hope of being the correct charger, the correct equipment. Um, so what's happened is it's charged the battery and then it's continued to try keep trying to charge the battery effectively, whereas normally you'd expect it to cut itself off. And it's not just e-cigarettes, is it? No, no, it's, a, it's everything else, really. You need to make sure the, you're charging a device with something that's compatible with it, ideally the one that came with it. The problem comes when people replace their chargers because there are so many cheap imitations out there. In one 12-month period, trading standards officers in Buckinghamshire seized more than 3,600 fake chargers. These chargers are almost indistinguishable from the real thing, on the outside at least. If you open it up, you can see just how cheaply it's manufactured to. You can feel straight away the weight of it is very light. All that's holding these very small wires in place is a blob of solder. Yeah. So if you drop this and one of those wires comes loose, then potentially the entire unit could become live. People think there is a minimum standard and it's absolutely safe. I don't think they appreciate that the reason it is so much cheaper is because the safety has been compromised. Quite frightening really, isn't it? Yeah, to think that you could be going to pull a charger out of the wall and be greeted with 240 volts, absolutely. So why are people still buying them? It comes down to money. A real charger might cost 15 to 20 pounds. Bought online. This fake charger is just three pounds. But do people even realise they could be putting their lives at risk? Would you buy a cheap one? You know, they're, they're about a fifth of the price. Yeah, why not? If it does the same thing as a, it's an expensive one, yeah. I would buy a cheap one, yeah, definitely. I mean, I have done before as well. Would the safety thing about it bother you? Yeah, because I saw smoke coming out of mine. Did you? Yeah. I'll just show you what can happen. Would you buy one now? No, <laughs> not after that, no. So you said you were happy to buy a cheap charger. 
Yeah. Maybe not anymore. That's crazy. And if that wasn't enough to make the point, back in the burn hall, our fire investigators have set up one more test. So this is a laptop battery, normally very safe, but yep. in an extreme set of circumstances, wrong charger, dodgy battery, could be dangerous. Normally perfectly safe laptop batteries, a lot of fail safes in laptops uh, nowadays, uh, and you wouldn't expect there to be any problems, but of course it could be damaged, it could be a different charging unit, we'd hope not to see this type of uh, laptop battery going, it, but it's possible, it's happened in the past. It is extremely rare, but the combination of a damaged battery and the wrong or fake charger could result in this. Oh. Oh. to risk something like that just for the sake of saving a few quid. Yeah, absolutely. It's clearly it would have ignited anything else that was around in that area. Be very, very wary of buying devices that might seem cheap at the time but might not be compatible and could cause you a problem in the long run. Everything I've seen today shows you'd have to be nuts to buy one of these. They might be cheap, but they could be the most dangerous thing you ever buy. Oh, thanks, Dan. Oh, gosh. I can just hear plugs being pulled out. I just yeah, right all now. Over the nation's <laughs> poised, aren't they? I just oh. put the kettle in you. Yeah, don't pull the TV out, though. <laughs> you need us until eight. Um, Tony's here. So, so we saw very clearly there, you know, the effect of a yeah. cheap charger. But it's not just cheap chargers, is it? No, it, it's problems? quite scary, isn't it? The, the problem is, for example, with e-cigarettes is that their batteries need less voltage than a lot of other items. So mm -hmm. if we start swapping chargers, mm -hmm. for example, you put a phone charger into an e-cigarette battery, well, the phone charger gives off a higher current, so that could overheat the battery and we right. can see yeah. uh, what happens there. The best advice is follow what the manufacturers recommend or, or, or stick to what they give you, you know. The other, the other issue is we all mix and match, don't we? We put one of those in the wall and just plug Sophie's guilty. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, the thing is, though, if it fits, you just plug it in, don't you? But you think, oh, yeah, the light's on, it's well, fine. I can't get anywhere near my toys. My kids are wet and they come off me. Really? Well, yeah. Here's something to tell them when they get home. What you've got to do is make sure that the voltage on this matches the voltage on your product. And if there's nothing, uh, there isn't anything on this plug, then you've got to go to the manufacturer's advice yeah. again. So we just ordered that willy nilly, and perhaps we shouldn't. Right. Well, the use of uh, e cigarettes has uh, recently been, it was last Wednesday, wasn't it? It was banned yeah. in New York. So what's the situation here then in the UK? Well, New York, Chicago, Brazil have banned them outright for some time now. The, 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 around the UK, it's quite interesting. In England, the uh, Public Health England, they advise the government on health and safety issues. They're considering <laughs> banning them. In Wales, there's a consultation underway until uh, June the 24th. In Scotland, it's called the Royal Environmental Health Institute for Scotland's GPs. They're going to call for a ban. And the government there have agreed that some kind of in regulation places, is needed. That yeah, a, a ban in public places, <coughs> should I say, yeah. And in Northern Ireland, a leading health charity is called for a ban as well. So you get the feeling that the weight of opinion is moving towards what's happening in America. Yeah, so there you go. Not a bad piece. Quite balanced. You know, an e cig battery, they, they force to explode first, and a laptop battery, and it's all about chargers and dodgy chargers um, and, you know, fake chargers. And then at the end, they push the bad thing about e cigs. Yeah, what can I say? Um, that bit was a bit of a kick, but there you go. Um, but, you know, up until that point, a pretty balanced piece about using dodgy charges uh, and chat have been quite um, vocal on that um, and uh, just going to scroll back and Dave makes a comment there do not mistake the power supply for the charger the charger is in the lead yeah um, depending on what you're using of course if you've got a USB to um, mini USB or micro USB if you plug it into a fake dodgy USB wall charger um, that is not giving you the right voltage out when it's drawn into the into the e-cig then um, the charger could fail or the e-cig could fail it's, uh, it's a huge can of worms isn't it but why spend £3.99 on something um, as opposed to spend £9.99 on something well because it's six quid cheaper um, but is it worth having something fail on you possibly not I think. Anyway, let's move on to my next little piece. Uh, and I found this. This is from Fox 12 News in the States. And there's two reports because there was one on the 7th and one on the 8th. Um, yeah, see what you make of this one. It smells 
like candy comes in a colorful bottle and is toxic enough to send a child to the emergency room. Tonight, there is a new warning about the liquid nicotine used in e-cigarettes. Yeah, just one mouthful for a child is like eating five cigarettes. As Fox 12's Kate Cagle found out, it could be deadly. These are the vials used to refill electronic cigarettes. It's a craze taking over tobacco shops. These don't have to be childproof, and just a few drops can poison a kid. Can you play with the train? Okay, let's play. Mother of three, Brittany Irons, just wants what's best for her kids. I don't think my husband's had a cigarette in months. Um, for me, it's been, it's been a while. To quit smoking, she switched to vaping, using an electronic cigarette to inhale flavored liquid nicotine. It's making it easier to um, slow down on smoking and on our intake of nicotine altogether. And she's far from alone. The industry is exploding. We went from one rack and we thought, okay, that'll be enough. And then quickly, it would sell out so quickly. We have two racks, three racks, and you can see how big it's gotten now. So many smokers are making the switch. Timber Valley Tobacco can't keep flavors like strawberry fields, grape, and cherry on their shelves. We probably don't even have all the flavors that are out there. There's so many flavors. The trend is causing a new problem. The rise in e-cigarette sales corresponds with a surge in calls to poison control centers. According to the CDC, the number of calls concerning poisoning from liquid nicotine has risen from just one a month in 2010 to 215 in February this year. The poison center at OHSU has received 31 calls related to the drug. You see peach and strawberry sound very tasty. Most of those calls involve children who got a hold of refill vials like these. It doesn't take much to kind of squeeze one of these little bottles into your mouth, just like a little baby bottle. Dr. Zane Horowitz is the medical director here. He worries the bottles are too easy to open, the flavors too tempting for kids. Just a few drops of nicotine are quickly absorbed in a child's system. Some, but not all of these children have gotten sick enough that we needed to send them into the hospital to control their... Um, recurrent episodes of vomiting and throwing up that sometimes can last for a good part of a day. More than half of the calls to poison control centers involve kids under the age of five. Irons keeps her vial stored high above the refrigerator and out of reach of her kids. We try to teach our kids that it is dangerous and it's gross and you know it's nothing that they would want to be touching. When looking into electronic cigarettes, we found an industry that is booming with no regulations. We'll be looking into that tomorrow on the 10 o'clock news. First up this half hour, the wild west of e-cigarettes. The new industry is taking off here in Oregon. Yeah, billions of dollars have been made worldwide, but Fox 12's Kate Cagle investigates why health advocates are calling the surge of these new products the wild west. It's a brand new addiction store owners can't keep on their shelves. It just just skyrocketed. Health advocates don't know what to make of it. We don't really have a good answer. I mean, it's happening so rapidly. And lifelong smokers see it as a breakthrough. It's about harm reduction. Our majority of our customers come in to quit smoking. Welcome to the Wild West of electronic cigarettes, devices used to inhale vaporized liquid nicotine. The method is so new, there's no standard make and model, no regulations, no rules banning the sale to minors. As a personal choice, a lot of stores have put 18 and above. They check ID for it. Henry's e-cigs opened up in Beaverton last October. Business picked up quickly and spread by word of mouth. And this says Oregon Vapor, so where it is, this one is local. They sell a variety of brands and flavors like butterscotch, cotton candy, even bacon. The ingredients in the juice are not always listed. They're not regulated either. In fact, you can legally make it right at home. It's not, it's not like baking cookies. Vaping advocate Tommy Devereaux showed us how. She's a nurse but says anyone with a little high school chemistry can do it. She uses an app to measure ingredients and buys liquid nicotine on the internet. This is 50 milligram per milliliter, which is, which is high. She then dilutes it with ingredients anyone can pick up at a grocery store. It's cheaper. I know exactly what goes in it. A few drops of flavor, and that's it. Tastes like lemon sweet tea. The danger of smoking is well established. 
The American Lung Association says there are 70 carcinogens in one cigarette, but nicotine itself is not one of them. It affects your mood. It affects how your body functions. The director of OHSU's smoking cessation program doesn't know what advice to give to former smokers who've become vapors. We just really don't know all the health consequences that are attached to using these electronic cigarettes yet. But while many users say the new trend is helping them kick a deadly habit. So far it's been a year. Yeah. Haven't had the urge to go back. Others worry this sweet temptation may have teens picking up a dangerous one. I think there is always this concern about gateway uh, substances, gateway use. Back in April, the Food and Drug Administration proposed some rules to regulate the e-cig industry. They would include streamlining ingredients, banning the sale to minors, and adding warning labels. They're taking public comment on that proposal right now. I'm Kate Cagle reporting the 10 o'clock news. Yes, that was Kate Cable reporting last Wednesday and Thursday at Fox 12 News, Oregon. Yeah, uh, and it's the same old thing, isn't it? Think of the children. Yes, well, we are thinking about the children because people are giving up using conventional lit tobacco and are using these instead and are going to live longer and are going to be around for their kids to grow up and they're going to be grandparents. So, you know... Um, a lot of information in there that just isn't right um, and you'll see in the next piece after the break um, that it gets even weirder it really does um, what's chat got to say about that oh i can't read what gary just said yeah nicotine leads to coffee costello says um, and plain packaging yeah i mean the whole childproof um, caps in the states um, needs looking at as someone else mentioned in chat um, we do have childproof caps over here we do have the uh, warning labels we do have ingredients um, maybe not every single ingredient when it comes to the flavoring um, but I'm sure that will soon come um, we're gonna need a huge bottle um, just to put the, li the, the labels on basically um, but the nurse who is making her own um, wearing goggles a little bit of overkill there, I thought. But she had like a gallon of VG and then a little bottle of nicotine. <laughs> I've got little bottles of VG and litres of nicotine. <laughs> Go figure that. Uh, and I don't wear gloves and I don't use uh, wear goggles. Um, but obviously, personal choice is there. Um, anyway, let's have some ads. Yes. Uh, and then uh, after the ads, I've got another little bit from... Um, another part of the states yeah the other side actually of of the country so uh, i'll see you in two vapor scene is proudly sponsored by health ev uk purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid
And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And we're back in the room. Hello. And I was just uh, watching chat <laughs> during the break there. I won't, uh, I won't say what Jester2109, um, what, uh, what they wear, he wears uh, or she uh, <laughs> wears gloves for. Um, but there seems to be you know, a kind of a difference of opinion on wearing gloves when you're mixing. Um, I use 75 and I don't wear gloves. Um, but uh, I do have my glasses, as someone else did point out, although they're not enclosed goggles. Uh, like the uh, nurse was wearing. But yes, there seems to be kind of a difference of opinion uh, if you wear gloves or not. It's personal choice, uh, as long as you, if you get loads on your hands, you uh, wash it off fairly quick, then you won't get too much of a nick buzz, will you? Um, but you know, I've been mixing for over two years uh, and uh, haven't had any serious consequences because of that. I've made some shoddy juice and I've thrown it down the sink. <laughs> but. Uh, I haven't had any uh, any serious consequences from that. Anyway, on to my next story, and this comes from a, uh, a channel called W A R L in Raleigh, yeah, North Carolina, uh, and um, it's another two-parter. So uh, have a little look and uh, see what you think. Right now on WRAL, they don't have tobacco and they're practically odorless, but some businesses are still saying no to e-cigarettes in North Carolina. Should electronic cigarettes be treated like regular cigarettes? New York City and Chicago recently banned e-cigarettes in restaurants and bars. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jackie Hyland. And I'm Gerald Owens. Here in North Carolina, government schools and businesses are making their own call. For example, the no-smoking policy in Chapel Hill includes e-cigarettes, but Raleigh and Durham have no effort in place to make that change. Duke University has banned them for more than a year. NC State has no specific regulation. Same with UNC Chapel Hill. Just yesterday, WRAL's Dr. Alan Mask looked at the health impact of this growing industry. Tonight, Renee Chu shows us the debate over where you can use these cigarettes. It certainly looks like smoking, feels like smoking, but the exhaled smoke does not linger or smell like smoke. People who do it don't even call it smoking. This is vaping with an electronic cigarette. I get the satisfaction, the nicotine that my body craves evidently, and I'm not harming anybody else, including myself. And why do you say that you're not harming anybody else? Because it's just vapor that goes out. An e-cigarette looks like a pen. It has a battery that heats a liquid solution containing nicotine and creates a vapor that users breathe in. What users breathe out? disappears quickly and is all but odorless unless you use a flavored oil. Caramelized banana. <laughs> Smell like syrup, doesn't it? Michelle Owens of Raleigh used to smoke a pack and a half a day. She says vaping has helped cut her regular smokes to just two a day. So yeah, I feel better. I feel healthy. I feel like it's safer for me than the cigarettes. I was tired of smoking cigarettes. Nick Owens says e-cigs also helped him kick the habit. Mostly I like uh, the fact that I can do it anywhere, um, pretty much, unless someone says otherwise. That freedom to puff away anywhere is what vapors truly enjoy the most. The statewide ban on smoking in restaurants and bars, the prevalence of tobacco-free campuses have pushed smokers outdoors. But e-cigarettes have no tobacco, so many vapors feel they should be able to light up where smoking is banned. Hi, we'll be right with you. Like inside Village Draft House in Raleigh. And it still shocks me to see it. Like, I see them exhale the, the vapor, and I'm, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Even if some do a double take, managers say so far no complaints from customers, so no ban. Can I get you anything at all? All set. At Ruckus Restaurant in Morrisville, owner Ryan Piltz has seen more and more customers using e-cigs inside his restaurant and heard from customers bothered by it. Because they might be sitting at the bar enjoying some sushi or a salad or a, a burger or whatever, and the person next to them has got, you know, a big cloud of smoke coming out. Just last month, this sign went up. No e-cigarettes allowed anywhere in the restaurant before 10 p.m. What do you think of that? Uh-uh. 
I think it's a decent idea. I mean, in a restaurant, you know, what you smell is what you taste, and so um, you know, anything you can do to improve the quality of the air is probably going to reflect in your food. You also can't vape at the airport, Wake Med, or Rex Hospitals. You can use them at Crabtree Valley Mall and Triangle Town Center. There's also concern about teens picking up the habit. North Carolina does ban sales of e-cigarettes to minors. School districts like Wake County, Chatham County, and Durham Public Schools have all banned e-cigarettes. Johnston County Schools could vote on a ban this month after high school principals noticed e-cigs popping up on campus. That gave me great concern that this would be uh, an entree to uh, regular tobacco products. Michelle Owen says she vapes all the time, everywhere she goes. Give me some examples and, and what kind of reaction have you gotten as a result? Um, I've smoked it walking through Food Line, not even a sideways glance from people walking by. Same thing in Walmart. I've had no negative effects. So far, there's been no push by North Carolina lawmakers to add e-cigarettes to the statewide ban on smoking in restaurants and bars. It is up to the individual business to decide whether to ban e-cigarettes. Now, their long-term effects still unknown. Renee Chiu, WREL News, Raleigh. And the FDA recently proposed regulating e-cigarettes for the first time. To watch Dr. Mask's story on the safety and risks of vaping, go to WREL.com and search e-cigarettes. What do you know about e-cigarettes? One fact is the industry has grown faster than our knowledge about the potential health risks. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jackie Highland. And I'm Gerald Owens. Industry sales grew from about $500 million in 2012 to $1.5 billion in 2013. But still little is known about the effects of vaping or inhaling the heated e-liquids. Our health expert, Dr. Alan Mass, takes an in-depth look at e-cigarettes, how they're made, and what the medical community is saying about them. At this e-cigarette shop in Cary, there's no smoking allowed. Vaping is fine with a wide choice of flavors. Like I got Cinnamon Toast Crunch, um, and you know, I think that's a fantastic flavor. It's what Gerald Fowler can't taste that he's really after, the nicotine. Why did you decide to try e-cigarettes? Well, it's, it seems a good way to transition from smoking, you know, into quitting. The flavor plus nicotine combo is created in businesses like Q-Vape, Juice, and Wilson. That is our focus, is delivering a quality vapor. Owner and CEO Sheila Williams worked 16 years in analytical chemistry. We have our own in-house analytical lab where we test nicotine purity. A third of the products have no nicotine. The rest, up to 3% of volume. It's mixed with flavoring, vegetable glycerin, and propylene glycol. But just based on the chemistry, um, what we do know is that there are no carcinogens. There are no federal regulations as to how it's made. Not yet. That's something you're anticipating the FDA is going to step in and start regulating what you're doing here, is that right? We hope so. Um, you hope so? We hope so. Yeah. Williams set up the business knowing FDA regulations were inevitable. She believes some competitors aren't as prepared. There's so many people out there right now making it in their basement and garage. Right. And that's yeah. what scares me. The difference in this facility, she says, is GMP, or Good Manufacturing Practices. It's a standard required for manufacturing food or drug products to assure safety and quality. So we provide a certificate of analysis for every batch that we prepare and ship out. Cubate will soon double production from 250,000 bottles a month to 500,000 bottles a month. As sales soar, many questions are still unanswered. What happens if you smoked this thing for 15, 20, 40 years um, is, is definitely a cause for concern. Medical oncologist Dr. Naraj Agrawal points to known risk factors for nicotine, even inhaled in a vapor, on the heart and the brain. So risk for causing Alzheimer's and dementia. In terms of the long-term effects of inhaling those compounds, that clearly needs to be studied. Dr. Jed Rose is director of Duke Center for Smoking Cessation. He's also co-creator of the first nicotine patch in 1988. He balances concerns about the vapors from e-cigarettes with the smoke of regular cigarettes. According to the latest Surgeon General's report, 480,000 Americans die each and every year from cigarette-related disease. So I think that we need 
innovative and bold new approaches to help cigarette smokers quit. His lab is gearing up to study e-cigarettes as a smoking cessation tool because other nicotine replacement therapies don't work for most smokers. Now, a study published in The Lancet last September showed after six months, 7.3% of study participants using e-cigarettes stopped smoking versus 5.8% using the nicotine patch. So you've been able to cut back from a pack a day now to... Uh, maybe three quarters of a pack. Okay. So, so I mean, it's a process. Then there are the flavors, like juicy fruit, chocolate-covered cherry, and the potential attraction for youth. I mean, I have patients whose kids are using it. And they are, you know, middle school kids. Yeah. They are getting exposed to nicotine at a very young age. These are the health issues the FDA will consider as they decide how far to go in regulating e-cigarette products. So my, my greatest concern is that it will be stamped out in um, by... Uh, excessive fears about fantastic scenarios that might happen. On the other hand, we do have the known 480,000 deaths a year from cigarette smoking. Now, the FDA has proposed regulations that restrict e-cigarette sales to the same age required for regular cigarettes. So could we also see warning labels on these e-cigarette nicotine juices? Gerald, the Q-Vape juice facility already anticipates the FDA is going to want these warning labels. So right now on their packaging and labels, they're starting to give us some warnings. For example, uh, possible birth defects, uh, not approved by the FDA, keep out of the reach of kids. It uh, should, of course, not be sold to minors. And, of course, it's not a smoking cessation aid. Of course, it's going to vary these warning labels from distributor to distributor that gives you a sample of what they're like. Dr. Mass, let's say you're not smoking one of these. Should you be concerned if you're around someone who is? Gerald, one small study showed that the exhaled vapor does worsen indoor air quality. More research is needed for more information. Be sure to go to our website at WRAL.com. We'll keep you updated. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mass. You bet. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, and I think it was Entropy in chat, as that was going past, uh, said it's Cleveland. And that's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, the guy sounded a bit like Cleveland from uh, from uh, the TV show. Yes. So uh, a kind of mixed bag in there. There's the guy who co-created the nicotine patch is, you know, he seems quite for them. Um, but then he's looking at the commercial aspects of, you know, using them for NRT. Um, but as we all know, the use of NRT in this country is being overtaken by the use of these because these work and NRT does not for some people. Um, I won't say it doesn't work for everybody because it is going to work for some people and these are going to work for some people. Um, but the majority of us um, who vape um, do it because we like nicotine. Uh, and there's a couple of things that I'd like to just address there. First of all, e-liquid is not oil. They've got to get this right. If you're going to do a piece on TV, if you're going to do a serious bit of reporting, you need to get your facts right. And we all know that e-liquid does not contain oil unless somebody makes e-liquid and puts oil in it. And if you do that, then you are heading for trouble, as we all know. Um, but yes, you sometimes you sit there and you watch these things and you think, what are they saying? Why can't they get the basics right? Uh, and again, the, uh, the school governor there thinking of the children. Well, we see that time after time on these reports. Uh, and again, it is infuriating. Who in their right mind is going to use an e-cigarette, use something like Juicy Peach, uh, and then think, oh, I think I'll just go and buy a packet of regular smokes now because, you know, I like the taste of Juicy Peach. So I'm then going to go and light a cigarette up. It's not going to happen, is it? But there you go. Right, I'm just looking at my time. Um, and the other thing I'd like to just address is um, the doctor, the oncologist, Chappie. Uh, and I've just done a little bit of VT um, about that. And that is coming up uh, right now. What happens if you smoked this thing for 15, 20, 40 years um, is, is definitely a cause for concern. Medical oncologist Dr. Naraj Agrawal points to known risk factors for nicotine, even inhaled in a vapor, on the heart and the brain. So risk for causing Alzheimer's and dementia. Harvey and Kay Ottinger have shared 50 years of homemade meals, so you can bet Kay noticed when Harvey's memory started slipping. She signed them both up for a memory test. So we both went down there and they screened us and Kay passed it very well, but I didn't pass. <laughs> Harvey enrolled in a study to test the effects of nicotine on memory loss. 
nicotine can improve uh, uh, learning, it can improve attentional performance. For the study, patients with mild memory loss will wear a nicotine patch or placebo patch right. for a year. The hope is that nicotine can replace the chemicals lost as memory fades. We think it, it would um, provide a way to treat the earliest signs of memory loss and attentional loss. The patch does not cause addiction. In fact, nicotine is also being studied to treat schizophrenia, ADHD, and Parkinson's. Dr. Newhouse is excited about nicotine's potential for Alzheimer's. This is the kind of work that makes my career and life and, and work seem meaningful. Harvey's not sure if he's on the real thing or a placebo, but either way, he says being in the study has already helped. I take a, extra precautions, like writing down certain things that I have to do. I feel good, you know. And if he does forget something, Kay is right by his side to remind him. <laughs> this is Jennifer Matthews reporting. Usually when she sits down, I go ahead and get there. Yes, so there you go, a couple of things there to kind of counteract what was said in that bit of ET. Um, they're using nicotine as a therapy for dementia and for Parkinson's and for Alzheimer's. Uh, and on Alzheimer's Research UK, and this is going back two years, um, they talk about it. Uh, and right down, kind of three quarters of the way down, um, although a nicotine-based therapy is unlikely to prevent or cure the disease, the scientists hope it could in future present a way of slowing the progression from MCI to Alzheimer's and treating some of the symptoms of the diseases. And that was on the Alzheimer's Research UK webpage. Um, so, you know, the first MD uh, over there in uh, North Carolina um, was saying that nicotine causes Parkinson's or Alzheimer's and dementia. Maybe he should speak to his colleague in the other state in America. Or, or maybe he should just read The Lancet, really, because uh, we all know that's a great publication over here in the UK. And we do, uh, we do show some stories from there from time to time as well. In fact, I get an update every week um, with various stories, which I bring to you. Yeah. Um, now, I've been planning for a few weeks to, to show a, a Greg Gutfield video, but I'm going to run out of time, so uh, I'll, I'll put it back to next week <laughs> because I can see my time is very nearly up. Don't forget, tomorrow night um, there is um, something that looks a little bit like this.
Yes, indeed. Tomorrow night it is Tin Your Tip with Gary Dibley and Mark Jones, who will be um, tinning and tipping and modding and hopefully, fingers crossed for them, um, no blood loss. <laughs> so yes, tomorrow night, nine o'clock, Tin Your Tip. Uh, Thursday, there's no show because Dave is busy down in London. Um, but VT Talk will be on your screens or on the internet at 9 p.m. on Sunday night. Yes, because Dave Kitson is away. So VT Talk will be on Sunday night. Monday, of course, it is the Hayes Hour with Kat and Dave and Keith. And it's me again next Tuesday night at 9 o'clock for Vapor Scene. Uh, don't forget, every night you can listen to RY4 Radio and the link will be going into chat as we speak, I would have thought. Um, and uh, of course, if you are a German speaker, you can watch DE Talk, which started about a minute ago on the other page. So until next week, my friends, have a good week. I'm going to Scotland tomorrow. So uh, if, I, if, the, if the weather's nice and I take my video camera, I might do something um, for next week's show. Uh, and I'll update you on the, the vapor record that I've been kind of making um, on the old Evic Supreme. Um, so that is it for this week. I will see you next week. Until then, tatty bye. Thanks for watching. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. <laughs>